This video shows a typical conciliation court hearing. The video also explains how you should prepare for your hearing. Our case today involves Abby Green and Tom Brown. Abby runs a daycare business in her home called Abby's Angels. Tom brought his son Joe to Abby's daycare for several months earlier this year. Tom paid Abby for the first and second months, but did not pay her for the third month. Abby is suing Tom in conciliation court for $400 unpaid daycare charges. Several weeks ago, Abby filed a claim against Tom. Abby selected conciliation court rather than district court because her problem is not complicated and the debt owed her is within the dollar limit for conciliation court. Abby is the plaintiff in this case because she is suing Tom. Tom is the defendant. Both Abby and Tom are handling their cases without lawyers. On the claim form, Abby wrote, I am suing the defendant because he did not pay me for my daycare services in March of this year. The defendant owes me $400. Tom will admit he owes Abby $400 for daycare for the month of March. However, there's another side to this story. Tom didn't have the $400 on March 1st, but he tried to pay Abby $200 on March 5th and offered to pay $200 again on March 15th. Abby refused the money. Tom plans to tell the judge about his attempts to pay. In this case, only Abby is claiming that she is owed money. But that's not always the case. Let me give you another example. This contractor and homeowner both claim they are owed money. The contractor is suing the homeowner to get paid for remodeling work. The homeowner feels that actually the contractor owes her money because the contractor damaged siding and windows on the house. In this example, the homeowner should file a counterclaim and be prepared to prove the damages to the house. Now we'll get back to Abby and Tom's case. It's scheduled for a 10 a.m. hearing today. It's 9.30, and both Abby and Tom have arrived early at the courtroom. They know it's very important to arrive early and to be in the courtroom when their case is called at 10 o'clock. Just before the hearing this morning, Tom offered to pay Abby $300 cash immediately as a total settlement of the case. Abby refused. She wants the full $400 and is willing to risk the possibility that even if she wins, she may have trouble collecting the full amount from Tom. Courts encourage people to agree on a solution before seeing the judge. Mediators may be available to help you reach a settlement agreement. Abby is reviewing her notes to get ready for the hearing. Before the hearing, Abby prepared a two-column list. On the left side, she listed all the facts that support her case. On the right, she listed her evidence to prove those facts. At the top of the list, Abby wrote her problem in one short sentence. Tom owes me $400 for one month unpaid daycare services. Fact. Tom promised to pay $400 a month for daycare by the fifth day of each month. Evidence. The contract signed by Tom and Abby. Fact. Tom paid for January and February by the fifth day of those months, but Tom did not pay for March by March 5th. Evidence. Abby's Angel's business record showing Tom's account with billings and payments. Fact. I talked to Tom about the unpaid bill on March 5th and March 8th and asked him to pay me $400. Evidence. My testimony about the conversation. Fact. I sent Tom a certified letter on March 10th, demanding payment of $400. Evidence. My copy of the March 10 letter to Tom, along with the certified mail receipt. Abby came to court with her original documents, like the contract and billing records, as well as two copies of each document. Before the hearing started, Abby gave Tom one set of copies. She kept the other set of copies for herself. Tom wants to prove to the judge that he tried to pay, but Abby refused to accept his money. Tom is concerned that Abby will deny that he tried to pay her. Tom brought a witness to help prove his point. Another parent, Mario, was there when Tom offered the $200 to Abby on March 5th. Tom wants to make sure that the judge hears more than just his word against Abby's word. 
The other people in the courtroom are also scheduled for a 10 a.m. hearing of their cases. Everyone must wait quietly in the courtroom until his or her case is called. The woman behind me is the court clerk. She announces Judge Smart's arrival. All rise for the Honorable Judge Smart. Everyone in the courtroom respectfully stands as Judge Smart walks in. They sit down again once the judge is seated. Then the clerk calls the case. The court calls the case of Abby Green versus Tom Brown. This is it. Abby, Tom, and Mario have taken their places. They raise their right hand while the judge swears them in. They are swearing to tell the truth. Abby speaks first because she is the plaintiff. Abby looks directly at the judge and tells the judge that the defendant owes her $400 for the unpaid daycare services in March. Tom is tempted to interrupt Abby and start explaining his side of the story. He stops himself and waits his turn. Tom does not want to make a poor impression. Abby asks if she may approach the bench and give the judge her written evidence. She refers to her list of facts and evidence to explain her case to the judge. It is now the defendant's turn to respond and the judge switches her attention to Tom. Tom speaks directly to the judge and tells her his side of the story. He says he has a witness who will testify and he points to Mario. The judge gives permission for Mario to testify. The judge asks Mario to state his name and then she asks Tom to question Mario. Tom asks if Mario was at Abby's house at 5 p.m. on March 5th. Mario says yes. Tom then asks Mario if Mario heard Tom and Abby talking about Tom's bill. Mario says yes. Finally, Tom asks Mario what he heard. Mario testifies that he heard Abby ask for $400 and then he heard Tom offer to pay $200 cash that day and $200 more on March 15th. The judge excuses Mario and Mario returns to his seat. Mario did not want to come to court. Tom believed that Mario's testimony was critical. So several days before the hearing, he got a subpoena from the court ordering Mario to be present at the hearing. The subpoena also says that Tom must pay Mario a witness fee and mileage expenses. The judge asks Abby if she wants to say anything else. Abby asks the judge to look at the contract Tom signed. The contract at paragraph 3 says that the full monthly amount is due on or before the 5th of the month. Abby asserts that she didn't have to take the $200 either time that Tom offered it to her because he had promised to pay the full $400 by March 5th. The judge offers Tom another chance to speak. Tom says he tried to pay and has nothing more to add. The judge invites Abby forward to the bench and returns her evidence. The judge tells them they will receive her decision in a written order in the mail. Abby is disappointed. She had hoped the judge would announce her decision immediately. We don't know how the judge will decide this case, but if Abby wins, her next step is to try and collect the money from Tom. The court does not collect the money for the winning party. What would happen if the defendant, Tom, did not show up at the hearing? Abby would wait for her case to be called and present her evidence to the judge. The judge might ask her questions. Without Tom there to dispute the case, she is likely to win. What would happen if the plaintiff, Abby, did not show up at the hearing? If the plaintiff fails to appear at the hearing, the defendant should ask the judge to dismiss the case. If the judge agrees, the case is over. If neither the plaintiff nor the defendant show up for a scheduled hearing, the court strikes the case. The absent plaintiff must file a new claim and start all over again if she wants to continue in conciliation court. Hopefully this presentation has given you some insight in how to handle a conciliation court hearing. Remember, be prepared, be on time, and present your case in an orderly and clear manner. The rest is up to the judge.